everybody. Welcome to Shields Live. So you just got me today. <laughs> Tim is, uh, this is the time of year we spend a lot of time in schools, um, you know, servicing sewing machines. And so Tim is out servicing machines today in the Iowa City schools. So he is still out in a school. <laughs> so Judy's here with me today so we can get this started. And, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about, um, we're going to talk a little bit about the, the Baby Lock Jubilant. The Baby Lock Jubilant is a really nice um, little machine to, um, it's a good, it's a good starter machine if you just want a nice, um, little electronic machine, some simple to um, start off sewing with. It's also a very nice machine for a carry around machine because it's not real big or heavy and it still has some nice electronic features on it. Um, so I really like, I really like this machine. Um, the second here, I'm going to run my comments over here. And um, I really like this little machine because it's just, it's very versatile. It's not a really expensive machine and um, they are just great for carrying around. And I have, um, it's always been a machine that has been popular, simple, simple to use, doesn't have a lot of um, dials and buttons and stuff on it. It's very user-friendly, um, something that people are, um, would be, are comfortable with. And um, anyway, so we're, we're just going to talk about this little machine today. I'm going to show you a, little, a few things about it, um, do a little demo so you can see how it works, wind a bobbin with it, and um, do some, you know, thread it and do work, talk about the feet and that kind of thing. So just a really nice little machine. And I think a lot of people already have it. So this machine is the Baby Lock uh, Jubilant that I, I happen to have out on the floor. Um, the, the brother version of this is the NS80. So um, the only difference between the machines is that one's going to be kind of light blue um, and white instead of the teal and white like this one. So I just don't happen to have that machine um, out of the box. So we have some of those in stock also. And um, I was just going to, so I just got the baby lock out. So anyway, so Tim's not here today to talk to you. So he says hi to everybody. And uh, he's out, he's out working in the school. So give me a second here. I'm going to turn the banner off. Let me hide the banner here. Get my comments back up here. All right. And we've been having a little bit of internet problems. So I apologize if things kind of blip occasionally. I think I got it fixed, but yesterday I had another little episode. So hopefully it'll be okay today. We'll see how it goes. So, all right. So let's, let's talk about the, the, the baby lock, the baby lock jubilant. So let me get the camera turned over here to the other camera. Just a second here. And the microphone. Okay. All right. So here's my little machine. And I have a little trouble when I have smaller machines to, to get the camera in the right spot because my camera arm is a little long. Let me move it over just a little bit. Sometimes if I move it over a little bit, it, it's at a better angle. So let me move this over just a little bit. I always struggle with the smaller machines because my arm here is kind of long. There we go. Let's see if this helps. Me. If I can get a little bit better angle on it. There we go. And the arm's not in my way. Okay. All right. So the Baby Lock Jubilant. So let's just talk a little bit about this machine. Um, it is a smaller machine. You can see it's a physically, I'm going to push this back a little bit so you can see a little bit more of the machine itself. It's a little bit smaller machine. Very nice for traveling. Very nice as a um, starting machine. If you're a little worried about, you know, trying out an electronic machine, this is a great little machine to try out. Um, and it's got some nice little um, features on it. One of the ones I love very much is needle up and down. So that's very, that's, that's part of having an electronic machine or, a, or a, a computerized or electronic machine. You get the needle up and down button, which is nice. You also have speed control on this machine. Okay, so then you can adjust it and you can run this machine with or without a foot controller. So I'm probably going to be running it without the foot controller. Um, one comes with it, of course. 
Um, and so this is the start and stop button. So I just use that when I sew because they're nice and small and it's very easy to touch that button because as I'm sewing, I'll just reach up and, and push the button with my thumb. So I find that very, very easy. Okay. It has a nice little screen over here and it tells you your information on the screen, which is really awesome. So it tells you what foot to put on the machine, like up here. It has a little icon for a foot and it shows you what foot to put on the machine for the stitch you have chosen. So that's very useful. And then this little area here is where the stitch length and the stitch width is. And these buttons here adjust the stitch length. So it's very simple, you know, it's just, it's very, it's very obvious what you're doing with this button and then this one's the stitch width. Okay, so very, very user friendly has a couple of extra little buttons over here. We'll talk about those in a minute. Um, and then this machine has a very nice automated needle threader, a good bobbin winder on it. It does have the tension dial. Um, still, it doesn't have the auto tension like some of the machines do, but just leave it on the number four. Um, if you need to move it off of number four, usually there's something wrong. So um, I really, I, the, the tension on these machines is very, very even, okay? So, um, and like I said, the, the brother version of this machine is the brother NS80, and I also have those in stock. Okay, and then of course it has a free arm. So let's look at that. We got a free arm here. This comes off if you need to get into a sleeve or to a, um, into a sleeve or a pant leg. It has a nice little spot in here. This opens up that you can put all your little stuff with it, and we'll talk about some of the things that come with it here in a minute. So I've got those laying out over here and there's a little spot in here to put them. Automated needle threaders over here um, has the real nice bobbin winder on it so that it holds the thread for you. So it's, it's much easier to wind your bobbins. And then this machine's really cool. All of the little, let me put these up here here. Let me pull this a little bit closer so you can see. Um, this little area right here, I really have always loved this, this setup on the machine. It shows all the stitches that the machine has on it right here, and then there's a number above it, and all you do to change your stitches is to turn the dial. And it tells you then up here what foot to change, like I've changed it to number 12, it tells me I need to have my G foot. And um, a few weeks ago, we went through all of the feet, and that's some of the things that we talked about, and I'll, I'll show you the feet that come with it too. Um, but that's what I really like about this, because I think it's very, it doesn't have a lot of button, buttons on it, it's not intimidating. And it just has a lot of nice little stitches. It actually has 80 stitches on it. There's quite a few decoratives, some very, very nice one-step buttonholes, mostly utility style stitches, but then it also has the piecing stitch. You know, we've talked about that before, the piecing stitches and some of the quilting stitches. It has the, um, it has like the blanket stitch if you want to do applique. So it has a very nice selection of stitches, including a serpentine. I use that quite a bit when I'm quilting. Um, some uh, decorative style that might be used for crazy quilting. So it has a very nice selection of stitches on it. So especially if this is your only machine, you can do a lot with this machine and it, it's very simple to learn to use. So let's just, let's just go through some things and we'll just learn a little bit about the machine and how it works, okay? So let's first learn how to wind the bobbin. So this one's just a little bit different bobbin winder than some of the machines are. Give me a second. I'm going to bring this camera up just a little bit. And I've got my spool of thread. This is um, Mettler. I love the Mettler thread. It's very strong and very smooth thread. So when you put your thread on this machine, it does lay down up here. Okay. And I'm going to lay my thread with the thread coming out from underneath like this. And then I'm going to put on the cap that is closest to the size of my spool. So in this case, it is the small one. This is the small cap. Let me show you in the baggie, you get some other caps too. So depending on the size of your thread spool, you wanna kind of get your cap to match your thread. Okay, so this one, I usually use the small one. This is a medium sized cap. And then some of them, you know, you need the bigger one. So this, you get a bigger cap too, okay? So just kind of get your cap to match your thread spool, whatever you're laying down in there, okay? Got that. Okay, so I've got the thread coming out from underneath. 
Okay. And I'm going to wind a bobbin first. So before we before we thread the machine, let's wind a bobbin. So all of the inf information is at the top, but I don't know if I can get the camera up high enough that you can kind of see the little lines up here. So there is a dotted line and a solid line. The dotted line is for the bobbin winding and the solid line is for the threading of the machine. So we're going to follow the dotted lines to do the bobbin winding. So I'm going to go through this little hook right here. Pick this up just a little bit so you can see. And I'm going to go through the little hook. And then number two is this little thing sticking out right here. So I'm going to go around behind that. So now I'm not going to thread the machine. I'm actually going to use the bobbin winder. So number three, that information's right here for the bobbin winder. And this little thing that's sticking up, I'm going to take the thread in front of it. And then I'm going to pull it around it. And underneath this little button, and that button is actually the tension. So if you've ever had problems with your thread over here under on your bobbin winder, if all your bobbin thread goes like down underneath this gray thing, that means that it's not under this little tension unit because this has to be the thread has to be under there. Otherwise, it all goes down underneath. So when I, let's do this one more time so you can see it. I'm gonna go in front of the little posts sticking up. I'm gonna wrap it around and then under that little button. I think I, I think it slipped on me, sorry. I'm a little bit far away with the camera here. So there we go. And I wanna make sure it's in there and I always give it a little tug to make sure it's in there well. And then I'm gonna take my bobbin and I'm gonna set it down on my little post here and I'm going to push it down and then I, I'm going to be real quiet and I'm going to turn this until it clicks. Did you hear it click? So when you when it clicks, then you know the bobbin is actually all the way on the post. And not going to, to move when you start winding your bobbin. So that's important. And this works for all the machines. So you want to do that. So like I put it on and I just turn it until I hear the little thing click out. Okay, there's like a little spring in here that clicks out into the bobbin. Okay, so I got that on. And then all I'm going to do is make sure this stays in the little, the little tension unit right here. And I'm going to bring it around and I'm going to wrap it around my bobbin clockwise, maybe six or seven times. And then I'm going to cut it off underneath the bobbin. And the little cutter that's underneath there, there's, there's two little cutters, one on each side of this little gray thing. And that's going to hold your thread for you so you don't have to put, you know, in the older style machines, we had to put the bobbin thread up through the hole here. And that was always hard. That's the hardest part for me is to get it threaded through that hole. So this one holds it for you down here. Okay. So now to wind the bobbin, I'm just going to push this over and it shows that on this part. So the first part of the instructions is right here and then it moves to here. For the bobbin winding and then it goes over to here and it's all dashed lines and that's what you're that's what you're following okay i've got this pushed over and now we're ready to wind the bobbin so the machine like i said does not need to have a foot controller and i can just push this button right here that says start and stop to wind my bobbin so it's going to wind the bobbin up here okay We'll just put a little bit of thread. We don't need to wind the whole thing today because we're just going to do a little sewing. And then this button right here with the speed, remember this? This is actually also the speed for the bobbin. So I can run it. I don't usually wind my bobbins complete, completely all the way up. I like to, to maybe do maybe a little over medium. Okay, then I'm going to pull this off because I'm, I'm going to be done with the winding. I don't need to wind the whole thing. If you wind a whole bobbin, it doesn't really stop. It just kind of starts hesitating when you get towards the end and you'll see it kind of just sort, sort, sort of get jerky like this. Then you know it's time to turn it off and you hit that same button I turned it on with down here, okay, to turn it off. Now, like I said, this, this bobbin winding is very similar to most of the bobbin winders on the Brother and Baby Lock machines. And this, so, so if you have another model than this one, it's probably very similar to it. Okay. All right. So we got our bobbin wound. 
So let's go ahead and thread the machine now. So I'm going to pull that out of this little tension unit. We don't need to use this again, and, and only for bobbin winding. And I'm going to start out the same way I did before, I'm, but I'm going to follow the solid lines this time. So I'm going to take the, the thread, and I'm going to go through the same little hook, and I'm going to go round number two, which is back here. Okay. Then I'm going to go down for number three. Now, the one thing I forgot to tell you is that it is very important when you are threading the machine that your foot, your presser foot, is up. And I already had it up. I just automatically put it up when I get ready to thread. So I already had it up. So it's very important because if you try to thread your machine with your foot down, there are little tension discs right up in, in this area and they would be closed. So then your thread won't go down into the tension discs and it would cause you to have um, tension issues because your, your thread is not going to be in the tension. It might be laying kind of on top of them. Okay, so it's very important you have this, this, this foot up. This goes for all the machines, okay? In fact, all machines in general. Okay, so we got one, two up here and then three straight down, okay? I'm see if I can get this just, I'm still not quite in the right spot, guys. I need to come this way just a little bit. This is the funniest little arm because it's kind of longer than my one I usually use. And it doesn't, it's really hard on the small machines. So I can't get it in the right spot. There we go. Okay. So here's three and I'm going to take it up and over. And then number four is that little hook in there. And all you have to do to get it on there is to swing your hand from right to left and it slides right into the little notch okay you do not need to use your hand wheel in fact i tell people don't use your hand wheel when you're when you're um, with these machines use your needle up and down button and we'll talk about that again here in a second so i just kind of swung from right to left and there's a little arrow up here that shows you that going from right to left to get it onto that little the little lifter in there okay and then straight down for five Okay, now when we get down here, I see if my camera will stay down <laughs> for this. This is a small machine. So straight down, there is a little hook or a little guide right above the needle. You can see where I'm touching it with my finger. Then I'm going to slide that thread into that guide. Now at this point, sometimes there's a lot of slack here. If I put my foot, my presser foot down now, now see there's some tension. You see there's tension on here, then it's easier for me to slide the thread into that little guide above the needle. Okay, so you can see how I just kind of took my finger and slid it in because now I've got some tension. And that's where I usually put my, my foot down when I get to number six because these are rather um, snug and they need to be. Um, so you want to be able to slide it in there. Okay, and it needs to be completely in there or the machine will not thread correctly. Okay. So now at this point, before I try to thread this machine, I am gonna hit my needle up and down button, which is right here. It looks like a needle, okay? I'm gonna go needle down, needle up, because then I know that my needle is all the way up as far as it goes for my needle threader, okay? This has got a really nice automated needle threader. It's very easy. There's a little notch right here. This is very similar to most of the machines. I'm going to go across the notch with the thread into number seven, because six was the thing above the needle. Cross the notch to number seven, which is right here. Okay. Then there's a cutter on the left, and you're not going to be able to see this. I'm just going to put the thread up along the cutter, and that's number eight. It's kind of back towards the back. That's number eight. Okay. And then number nine is, I don't know if you can see the handle. Let me turn this a little bit. Can you see this? This is number eight. So here's the cutter right here. And then number nine is this handle. And the handle is gonna thread the machine. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this down all the way to the bottom, okay, and let go. And now it has pushed the thread. Can you see the little loop there? Right through the eye of the needle. Isn't that easy? I just love this needle threader. Now this one doesn't have, some of the machines have kind of a click sound that they make when they, but this one is soft. So you have to just make, push it all the way down as far as it goes and let go, and then here's the little the little loop, and it went right through there, okay? So there's threading the machine. So see how easy that was? And then 
to put the bobbin in, we, we wound our bobbin, but let's go ahead and put the bobbin in the machine. So to, to put the bobbin in the machine, you're going to go ahead and you're going to make the letter P in front of you. So it's going to look like a Q for you guys because I'm holding it in front of me. It, it, no, I'm sorry. It looks like a letter P. <laughs> Hope it doesn't switch over. No, it didn't switch over. Sometimes the camera can be can be mirrored. And I, I thought I caught it that it wasn't mirrored today. So, so it's going to look like a letter P, okay, with the thread coming off the left-hand side. I'm just going to lay it down in the bobbin case and then i'm going to put my right finger on top of the bobbin and there's a little arrow that goes up and around this little you can see the little slot here i'm going to push the thread under the little gray arrow and all the way around and over so this is very similar to most of the brother and baby lock machines okay i do not have to pull my bobbin thread up with this machine i can just start sewing okay so i'll try that i'll show it one more time so I'll make the letter p like this. Okay. Lay it in the bobbin case. I like to put my right finger on top of the bobbin. So there's a little tension. Then I'm going to slide it up around and cut off on the end. Okay. This little slot right here. And it goes under this little gray. There's like a little tab right here. And it goes underneath that little tab right here. You can kind of see it. Okay. All right. So there's our bobbin. All right. So let's look a little bit at the screen here. I wanted to show you um, some of the buttons and stuff on it. So let's look a little bit at the buttons on the front of the machine. So we've got it, we've got it threaded. We know this is the needle threader down here. Needle up and down. That is very important for all the machines before you try to thread your machine. Use your needle up and down button because then you know if you've touched your hand wheel or if you've bumped it, you know that the needle is all the way up in the upright position. Okay, so I use my needle up and down button almost every single time I thread my machine. And probably every time. This is the button that will do a tacking stitch. So if I just want to tie a knot in place, I'm just going to go back to a straight stitch and then I'll show you this button over here. Show you the difference between these. A lot of people ask me what the difference is. Okay, so this one here, if I hold this down, the machine is just going to go up and down about three times and tie a knot in place and stop. So as a quilter, I really like that because then I don't have like a tacking stitch, a backup, because sometimes when you reverse the machine, it kind of veers off just a little bit because the feed dogs reverse. So I really like this tacking stitch. So that's what the little button is here. Okay, there's another reason for it, but we're not going to get into that today. I use this one mostly for tacking. This button then is actually the reverse. So then if I hold this in, it's physically going to go backwards. You can see the machine is sewing backwards, okay? And it will stop as soon as I release the button, okay? This button then is the start and stop button. So it lets me run the machine without using a foot controller. And of course you can use a foot controller if you want to, and then I stop the machine with the same button. Okay, and this machine is set up for the, the needle to be in the down position. So there is a way you can change that, and I'll show you that as well. Okay, so um, the next one over here we talked a little bit about earlier. This is your speed. So when I sew without a foot controller, I like to sew about half speed because that's very controllable for me that I can control my fabric and I can get up here and get my needle changed and I can pivot if I need to, okay? So I sew at about half speed, maybe a little bit faster, but it's easy to then be able to move and get my hand to where I need to start and stop the machine. I actually do um, sew on these smaller machines most of the time without a foot controller because I find it very comfortable and um, you're, you're not reaching for your foot controller and stuff. Now, my bigger one, I have to because this is so high, but the button is so low on these and it's very comfortable to reach. Okay. So, this is the speed over here. This is also the speed control when you're using a foot controller. And what it does is, like, if I set it half speed here, even if I floor my foot controller, it will only go half speed. Okay, so when I use a foot controller, I usually move this all the way over because then I have full range of my speed with my foot. Okay, so just be aware of that because I've even had people call that 
that they said, well, my machine won't go. It just takes a couple, it just goes very, very, very slowly. Well, what happens is if this gets pushed all the way down, that's the maximum it will go with a hook controller. So I usually push mine all the way up to the top. When I'm sewing without the foot controller, I like it around the middle for, for, for speed, make it comfortable for me. Okay. So then let's look over some, let's look at the, at the screen and a few of the buttons over here. All right. So again, this little button, this little um, icon up here is what foot to put on when you're using, when with the stitches. And that is very, very, very helpful. So I'm going to show you the feet then that come with the machine. Let me get them out of the baggie here. And they, all the basic feet come with this machine. Get some extra bobbins. Put them back in the baggie so I won't lose them. Okay. So right now it's telling me to put the J foot on because I have a straight stitch chosen. And that is the standard foot that is already on the machine. Um, if I go over a couple of stitches, and again, I'm going to use this dial to change my stitch. So if I go over to say number, let's try a number 11. Number 11 tells me to use the G foot. Now I did another video about all these feet. And so you can go watch that one. And these are the same for most of the machines. This is the G foot. They're all labeled. Okay. This is the G foot. And, um, I think I called the other video, all those feet. And it's on YouTube, and it's also on our Shields um, Facebook page, okay? So this is the G foot, so it tells me to put the G foot on. This is a special foot for doing overcasting, okay? And if I go over a little bit more, I have to go look and see here where I'm at. Oh, let's try number 12. 12 is still overcasting. 13, I think, is still overcasting. And let's see. Oh, here we go. Let's go to 21. So if I get down here to 21, I'm just turning the dial, 21. Now it tells me the letter R. So the letter R is the blind hem foot. And it's right here. It says the letter R on it. And again, it's a specialized foot for doing blind hemming. Okay. And I also did this on, in the other video. Okay. And let's see. Um, What other ones? Oh, let's go do some of these other ones are going to say J. These are some of the stitches down here. Most of those are with the J. Oh, here's one. Number 26 is more of a decorative stitch and kind of a satin stitch. This one says to use the end foot. The end foot is the monogramming or the decorative stitch foot. So that's this foot. It's a little bit more open in the front, but it has kind of a trough down through the middle for those extra stitches. Now, this is not a, a foot that I use unless I'm doing decorative stitching. Um, the a lot of people like to use this foot instead of their j foot when they're doing regular sewing but the thing is this one just has the two little rails and there's no feed dogs in the center so it doesn't feed quite as well um let me show you the difference in the j this one has a solid bottom okay so this is a standard j foot so this is not the foot that i use unless i'm doing decorative stitching in because it doesn't feed quite as well as this one you can see there's a difference it has the two rails and it just has a solid bottom okay so that's the deck that's the monogramming foot or the decorative foot and then let's see what else we got here we got let's go look at some other ones how about number 42 Okay, 42 is going to tell me to use the A foot, okay? The A foot is the buttonhole foot, okay? And we've talked about this too. And then this, this one would go on, and this is where the button goes, okay? So this is the buttonhole foot. And then I think this one also has, I don't think this has that stitch. Some of the machines have a little stitch that you put sew your buttons on with. They do give you the foot. So in this case, this is the M foot that comes with it. And you, you can sew your buttons on with this. And again, in that other video with all the all those feet, I, I went ahead and did little demonstrations on all of these feet. And this is the ones that come with this machine too. Okay. And then this is the zipper foot. And this is done with a straight stitch with the needle in the center. Okay. So this is the zipper foot. And this is the letter I. So those are the feet that comes with it. So it has quite a few feet and the, most of the basic sewing feet that come with it. Then as you saw that I, when I was moving this dial, you noticed 
that these numbers often would change. So these are what these numbers are, are the lengths and the widths of the stitches. Most of them can be changed by changing using these little buttons right here, okay? So when I change this and make it a bigger number, that means that the stitch is getting longer this way. And if I change this dial, it's only seven millimeters. The seven is the biggest it'll go, but it'll go smaller and that's the width this way, this way, okay? And then, it, and then if you see the little circle there, that means that that is their default or kind of normal setting that bro brother or baby lock has um, chosen. So that's kind of the, the, that's where the little circles are, okay? So it's very easy. These are just length this way, width this way, okay? On these two buttons. This button here puts you into what they call twin, uh, twin needle mode. So that's, something that you may not now see oh gosh we have an error well that means that this particular stitch that i'm on is not available for twin needle mode so i'm going to dial this back to like number three and then i'll show you sorry about that because I, I always like to show everybody because it because you might get an error and you're not sure what it was but twin needle mode is not available and you can see the two little needles up here now that's it shows you a little icon and the needle is stopping in the down position, okay? But if you have two needles here, that means that it knows it's going to be using a twin needle, okay? If you look up here and you start dialing different stitches up here and you get this error message, and you have the twin needle, it, it might give you an error message. Then that's some, you may look to see that you have only one needle there because then you'll get messages that will be an error because not every single stitch works with twin needle. Okay, so that's what that is. And then this little button actually is an automatic tie off. So if I put this need, this button on, you can see this little icon comes up now. Let's go back to number three, which is the one in the center straight stitch. This is a really cool little, little thing. And then you can automate your tie-ins and tie-offs. Oops, second here, I gotta get my foot back on. There we go. And so when I go to tie-in and tie-off, if I start the machine, it's gonna go forward a few stitches and it's gonna go backwards a few stitches and then it's gonna go, okay? And then when I'm ready to stop, if I reach up here and tap this button up here, it's going to go back a few stitches. Then it's going to be forward a few stitches automatically and stop. So that's a nice way. If you if you do a lot of back tacking, um, then you can use that uh, little function to do that more automated so you don't have to touch so many buttons. Okay, so that's, that's what that little button is. So that's about all the buttons. There's not a lot of buttons on this machine. And that makes a lot of people very happy because it's not too intimidating and you can find figure out what everything does very quickly. Okay. I always find this machine very, very user friendly. Okay. So again, this is the button then that changes the stitches. So everything's listed here for you, what stitches they are, and you just go to the stitch that you want. Now, the one thing that I always like to show everybody is you notice that I'm going to turn this off and turn it back on again. It comes up with the number one. So normally right out of the box, these machines come up and most of the machines do for brother actually come up and I don't know if you can see it with the needle on the left, okay? So the needle on the left is how the needle plate is also set up. So like if I wanted a 5 8 inch seam, I would put my needle on the left and I would put this fabric right on the little 5 8 inch marking, okay? I learned to sew with the needle in the center. The older machines all were needle in the center. I really struggle with the needle on the left because I, I focus in the center of this foot. There's a little notch right here. So I like the, ne the needle to always come up in the center, okay? Because there are some feet, like a piecing foot, if you're learning to piece quilts, that only have a hole in the center, okay? And so we went through all of those piecing feet too a few weeks back. And that's also up on um, the Shields Live or on the Shields uh, Facebook page as well and on YouTube. Um, but I like this needle to be in the center. So I'm going to show you how to do this. They moved it. 
when they when this machine came out it was in a little different spot so i had to find it again but i love that setting so that when i turn this machine on i want it to come up on stitch number three so that it's always with the needle in the center okay so to do that i'm going to turn the machine off and i'm going to hold down this little negative button for the that was the stitch length i'm going to hold the negative button down and i'm going to turn flip it on and i'm going to hear a little i'm going to hear a little beep and then see it's now it's on number three so every time i turn it on it's going to come up to number three unless i tell it differently okay so i really like that feature because now when i turned it on you can see that my needle is in the center okay so this this machine has a lot of nice little features i love the needle up and down it's I love the size of it because it, let's say, I mean, that, that's why I decided to do this today. A lot of people are traveling this time of year and camping and that kind of thing. And I have a lot of people come in asking about a smaller machine that they can take with them in their camper or traveling in the car but that's not too big. And this is a lovely little machine because you don't have to give up a lot of stuff. It still sews very well, has the needle up and down button has the start stop, has the speed control, and has quite a lot of stitches on it. And it is a wonderful machine for carrying with you. I've always liked it. Now, the one thing they did several years ago is they um, changed the feed system in the machines a little bit. So they're, they're, these machines feed extremely well. They have seven feed dogs. There's two big ones, and then there's three back here, and there's two in the front. So these really, really feed very well. And they also made the feed dogs in recently, the last few years, they've actually made the feed dogs longer. So then, and the foot is longer, so that everything just feeds through the machine really well. Very nice. I Very nice upgrade, I thought. And I just couldn't get over how much different the machines felt. Um, after they did that. So they, this has been a few years now, but I really think it really improved how they sew. And they pull the, the fabric through the machine so well. And so we can do a zigzag. I'm going to go over to like number seven or eight is my zigzag. Okay. And you can see I'm just using the button to run the machine. And I can stop it with that same button. Okay. Raise my needle with the up and down, the needle up and down. So when I'm sewing, I normally, now this one does not have a cutter, but so I have to flip the little thread over my cutter on the side, which is, which is the one thing that this machine doesn't have is a cutter button. Some of the machines do, but this one doesn't. But it is a very nice lightweight machine to carry with you on your vacation, on, you know, take it camping with you. And it's also a wonderful starter machine especially if you are have not had an electronic machine before and you don't and it's very very user friendly with all with very few buttons on it and um, very simple to thread very simple to put the bobbins in okay so let's look a little bit we know what feet came with it let's look a little bit and see what other accessories that come with it has a nice little nylon cover to go over the top has an extra spool pin so that goes in this, there's a little hole up here that it slips in. So when you do your twin needle, there's another little school pin up here. Get your cleaning brush. So let's, let's see, oops, hopefully I don't knock them all off on the floor. The, the little screwdriver, I love these little round screwdrivers, comes with it to get your needle plate screws off, okay? And to tighten your needles in or to take your foot on and off. So this is a great little screwdriver. I actually don't use the little screwdriver end, I like to use just the round end or a quarter works really, really well, or a nickel. Okay, we're gonna get a couple of screwdrivers. We've got a screwdriver and a seam ripper. And then this is the little cleaning brush so you can clean out under your bobbin case. We did, we talked about cleaning and maintenance a couple weeks ago. So this one is gonna be the same as the, the machine I was using in that demonstration. And then you get some twin needles and you also get a pack of needles with it. So this has a nice, some nice little accessories, some good, good feet with it, all the basic ones. 
and it, it's very lightweight so if you need to carry it, it it is nice i have a lot of people that go to classes this is a this is a very popular class class machine so um and it depends on and they're they're both up on our website shieldsewingcenter.com these can actually be purchased on our website so they are up on the website and both of them so the brother is the ns80 and then this is the baby lock jubilant so this is the jubilant and they're both up there all right so i think everybody would be able to just sit down at their jubilant and start working with it i mean it's a very fun machine to use very easy um and i've always i've always liked the size just for for carrying it's very lightweight and it works great when you're working with um and it's a good piecing machine i pieced quite a little bit on one of these this size um because because it, it's not a real big it, it's going to be a little harder to like quilt like actually physically quilt to quilt because it's not a real big machine but for piecing and all that kind of stuff it's just it's just a perfect size so all right you get some bobbins with it oh and i, I was going to show you they actually gave you another little thing i forgot that they they put this in here second here I'm gonna reach over they put a little they give you another little guide that has all this the stitches on it that that sets up on the handle so if you need it a little bit bigger then this is kind of small down here they give you a little bigger one and see this is that's up here on the handle and then you can see the numbers a little bit bigger so if you have trouble reading the little ones down here you can just look up here and then turn the dial to the number you want so like if i want number 20 i can just turn the dial down here and these are just larger so <laughs> i like the i like the larger print then this is very small down here so all right so that is the baby lock jubilant very simple easy machine to learn and it's been very popular and it's i i've always loved it so they kind of took two machines they uh, some years ago they had one called the ns40 and they did have an ns80 and the ns80 had a more of a button um a button system over here so what they did is they took the ns40 and the ns80 and they combined them together and they made one machine and called it the NS80 also. And I, I like it because they kept my favorite things of both machines. My favorite thing for the NS40 was this dial system to get to your stitches because it's very non-intimidating, not too many buttons on it. It was the same setup here, speed control, needle up and down, all that. And then my favorite um, feature of the NS80, of the, the older one, was the automated needle threader because the NS40 didn't have that. So I just thought that was so cool that they kind of combined the two machines and made one really nice, simple machine with a few more stitches on it. And, um, and it has the nice, the nice little spot down here to put your stuff. So um, they kind of did that a few years. This one came out about three or four years ago, three years ago, I think. Um, so I thought that was a really great um, innovation. And then they made the feed dogs longer and and they speed so nicely. So, okay, we're going to leave. No, I forgot to talk about the tension dial. The tension dial, um, I think I did earlier, but the tension dial, we're going to leave on number four. So that's where the tension should be. If you need to move that, usually something's wrong. Okay, so don't, so, so most time number four, and that goes for most of the machines. So, okay, so I think we've gone over the, the, the uh, Baby Lock Jubilant. And I'm going to I'm sitting and just switch my camera up and I'll say goodbye to everybody. Tim's not here to say goodbye to you today. So you, I'll just have to say goodbye to you. And we will, oh, and I forgot to tell you, let me turn this up here. Get the other camera or get the other microphone. Um, next week, I am going to be on vacation. So we won't have Shields Live next Wednesday. So we will have, um, what's the next, next Wednesday is what, about the third? of august oh my gosh are we already in august heavens um yeah next week is the third of august so we will not have class on the third of august but we will have class hopefully on the 10th of august so on wednesday so we're going to skip a week because i'll be on vacation next week so okay so if you have any questions about the baby lock jubilant we have them in stock and i also have some of the brother ns80s in stock um, go to shieldsewingcenter.com or give us a call at one of the stores 
if you'd like to purchase one. So um, they're really great little machines. And you, then you're off on vacation with your sewing machine. So thanks a lot, everybody. And we'll be seeing you in a couple weeks. Thanks. Have a good day.